in this part of the series of tutorials, uh, what I intend to do is to uh, do a sort of an in-depth analysis or uh, an in-depth look at some of the components in, uh, in Qtik tab. Uh, so the first thing I'll do, as I did in the previous parts of the tutorials, is just run the program, which is right here. Okay. Uh, like I said before, a, a good thing to have is a uh, uh, just a quick shortcut to Qtik tab. You don't really need to use a tab. I don't think anybody needs to use a tab without the GUI. Uh, if you don't need the GUI, I suppose you could just use the uh, component in the GUI which uh, encompasses the, the command line interface. Okay, so what I'll do now, let me just space things up, I'll put it on the second desktop. Okay, that's my main window for work. Uh, the way I align the window, let me just put the, uh, the text editor in one screen. I, I usually try to separate the uh, workspace in such a way that I make it good use of space and I have access to all my uh, utilities uh, with separation between them. Uh, what I'll do now is I will open one of my functions here um, and I'll start with the editor because I think that's a lot simpler. Okay, so the editor uh, for uh, Octave in this case uh, I found exceptionally good compared to the one I used in MATLAB for many years. Uh, when I was using MATLAB, I used to, uh, to, to, to resort to using the KDE editor instead of the MATLAB one, the built-in one, uh, for all sorts of reasons. It was really, really clunky, and the only good thing about it was that it had debugging built-in, so it had the, the possibility to put breakpoints interactively and to then invoke them. Now, what's good in this editor is that it, con it has uh, syntax highlighting, it's very uh, it integrates really nicely onto a KDE desktop, so if you have a KDE desktop, you probably uh, will have a good experience dragging and dropping things and having things looking very consistent with the rest of the environment that you work with. Um, so what, I, what I, I'd like to show here is that when I have my current files that I work with, uh, I've got them in tabs, so it's a tabbed editor. Uh, not all editors contain this functionality, even fairly uh, advanced editors sometimes don't have this functionality which is necessary especially when you deal with multiple files that link to each other and you don't really want to have multiple windows and things like that okay uh, you have here I see zooming, copying, pasting, undo, redo uh, opening a terminal I think that's opening a terminal let me just check with the no, that's sent to Octav so you have the option of actually sending selective parts of the code to Octav which in my case it's on here on the other window so if I move a bit to the to the left I can see that okay so what else do we have okay so here we have uh, debug mode uh, execute so I can run my uh, my uh, program as it is now uh, the the file which is being highlighted or the, the file which is currently active uh, among the selections is going to be the one to be run, to be executed, so I don't actually have to touch the command line or put the name of the function, it will be passed automatically to the uh, to the terminal. Okay, uh, that's closing a tab. I wish they had a shortcut like Control w to do that. Uh, usually uh, it's accepted that you should have some way of moving between the tabs with the Alt key or with control keys, things like that, control combinations. Okay, uh, save as, save open and new. Okay, so uh, we also have a small clipboard, and here you can see at the bottom uh, it doesn't contain anything of use right here, it's just some contents I put in. And the small clipboard is supposed to give you some kind of history or some kind of a uh, uh, ability to keep track of things you've selected or things you've copied and pasted. Uh, it's a bit of a stack, it's a bit like Clipper, it's a bit like uh, uh, Glipper with G. Uh, Windows probably doesn't have this functionality. I think you can install all kinds of power toys for it and it might do that. Uh, but it's a really nice, it's a really nice uh, little tool that a programmer might use to, to have in. Uh, what I have here, uh, for instance, is the uh, 
uh, variable and syntax loops and whatever and I'm going to reserve this to a later tutorial because I I'm, I'm don't deal with the programming part yet I think it's it's reasonable to first introduce us to the tools that we have before we deal with how to do programs which which I think is uh, uh, pretty simple when you deal with these uh, with these types of paradigms anyway okay let's go to the other window and here like I said before uh, at the top we have all kinds of shortcuts to functionality which is built into uh, Octave uh, or you know any of the compatible programs even MATLAB or whatever and it's a really nice thing to have if you don't remember the names of functions uh, one of the things you might find here is that you can do plots in 2D and 3D and you can just kind of use uh, GUIs that allow you to uh, input the uh, 